In today's lesson, we're going to be going over how we can create a chatbot in Xcode using SwiftUI. And it's going to be a very fast project. I was actually shocked at how fast I actually made this project. So just to demonstrate what we're going to be making, let's go ahead and click and let's simulate the keyboard and say something such as hello and click on send. The chatbot's going to process the message and is going to respond to it depending on what we say. And we can also go ahead and say something such as how are you and click on this send arrow over here and it's going to achieve the same result. And the chatbot's going to be able to process whatever we use and give us an appropriate response depending on our own logic. We can also type something random and send it and it's going to say that's cool and we can also say goodbye and the chatbot's going to say, talk to you later. So there's actually a lot we can do with this chatbot, and I'm just going to be showing you how we can set this up so you can create your own chatbot, and you can add your own responses, and so on. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and open up Xcode and create a new project by holding down Shift Command plus N. Then we will go ahead and click on App and Next. We will call this Chatbot tutorial, make sure we have Swift UI and Swift as the language and click on next. Then we just have to specify a project location and click on create. Now the first thing I like to do is change the iPod touch to an iPhone 13 and close the sidebar and then we will minimize this and click on resume. Now the first thing we have to take care of are the variables. So here we're going to type in at state private var and message text. And this will be whatever we decide to send to the chatbot. And then we also have to go ahead and create an array of messages. So var messages, which are all going to be of type string, are going to equal the first message you want to appear, which I just used welcome to chatbot 2.0. And we can also minimize this sidebar because we won't be using it anytime soon. Now inside the body, we're going to get started by creating a V stack. And the first thing I want to take care of is the title bar. So inside here, we'll create an H stack followed by a text that has the app name, which I'm just going to call iBot. Then we'll give it a font of dot large title followed by a bold text. And I also want to provide an image with a system name of bubble.left.fill with a font of dot system and a size of 26 then a foreground caller of caller.blue. So that is the title or the logo for our application. Below that, we're going to go ahead and create a scroll view, which should take the remainder part of the screen. And we're just going to add this placeholder that we will enter the messages here, so messages. And below that, we're going to go ahead and take care of the actual message bar. So here we'll type in hstack, and the first thing we want to provide is a text field. So text field that says type something, which is where the user will send the message, of course. And the text is going to be a binding variable of message text. So as you can see at the bottom of the preview, we have a small text box. So we want to give that some padding and we want to change the background caller to caller.gray.opacity and set that to 0.1. Then we can go ahead and give it a corner radius of 10. And we want to provide an on submit action. So here we type on submit. And now whenever the user clicks on enter, it's going to submit this code. Then below that, we want to go ahead and create a button. And the button is going to have some code that sends the message. So we'll just say send message because we still have to create that function and we will provide a label. And the label is going to be an image with the system name paper plane dot fill. And right now it looks far too small. So we have to go ahead and give it a font of system font with a system size of 26. And we want to give it some padding. So padding dot horizontal and we want it to be of 10. So we have some space between the edge of the screen and the chat bar. And this entire H stack is going to have a padding around it so it doesn't look so compressed. And let's also go ahead and take this placeholder and insert it right here because the button and the on submit are going to achieve the exact same goal, sending the message to the bot. 
But now before we continue with the UI, I actually want to go ahead and create a few functions. And the first function is going to be in a separate window. We're just going to click on the chatbot tutorial folder and click on command plus N to create a new Swift file. And it's going to be called bots response. And just as a reminder, in case you get lost at any point of this tutorial, I have uploaded all the files to GitHub and you can find that in the description down below, just in case. But inside here, we're going to create a function called get bot response. And that's going to equal a message of type string, which is going to return a string depending on what string we insert. Now inside here, we're going to create a variable called temporary message, so temp message. And that's going to equal the message lowercase because lowercasing a message just makes it so much easier to process. And inside here is where you want to insert the logic for your bot to respond to. Of course, since this is a very basic bot, we're going to use plenty of if else statements. So if temp message dot contains, let's say the word hello, then we're going to return the string of hey there. Else if temp message dot contains goodbye we're going to go ahead and return talk to you later so as you can see it's as simple as that to create a message system and of course it's up to you to insert your own responses or even add some logic that turns this into ai but this is the basic concept of how we're going to create this chatbot so for the last two i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it in all I'm adding is if it contains, how are you? It's going to respond, I'm fine. Otherwise, no matter what the user writes, it's going to return, that's cool. So hopefully the user does not write something that's extremely offensive. But with this being done, we can go back to the content view and continue inside here. And we will not be using the sidebar anymore, so we can just close that. But now let's go ahead and add the functionality so that we can actually send the messages. So right below the last closing bracket, we're going to create a function called send message, which is going to take a message of type string. And each time we send a message, we're going to want to animate it. So we're going to use a very simple keyword called with animation. So we type in with animation and inside here, whatever we do is going to animate the following UI. So if we're going to go ahead and append to the messages, any kind of text, it's going to animate appending it to the list. Now inside here, we're going to go ahead and type in user plus the message. And it's important we use this over here because that's going to be used to identify the user message and differentiate it from the bot message. And every time we send a message, we also want to go ahead and call self message text and set it to zero because we want the chat box to be emptied every time we send a message. So this will take care of sending the user message to the list. We also need to send a bot message though. So to simulate a delay, I'm going to go ahead and use a dispatch queue and call it on the main thread with async after, and what it wants is a deadline, which is going to equal dot now plus one second. So it's going to have a one second delay between us sending the message and us retrieving the message. And we also have to animate this. So with animation, we'll go ahead and type in messages dot append, and inside here, get bot response for the message. So as you can see so far, nothing has changed. And that's because we updated the functionality, but not the actual code. But what we can do now is go to our send message function and type in send message and insert the message text. And we can copy this one here and place it inside the button as well. But now let's go ahead and actually test if this is working. So inside the scroll view, we're going to go ahead and create a for each loop. So for each and each of the messages with an ID of backslash dot self. And we're going to say for each message in, then we're just going to go ahead and add a text view and insert the message. So the first message you're bound to receive, of course, is welcome to chatbot 2.0, because that's the first message we have specified inside the messages array. But if we actually click on this play button and test it out, we can type something such as hello, and we can send it and it's going to say hello and it's even going to respond to us. And if we type something else such as that, it's going to say user, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to say, that's cool. 
So as you can see, the functionality is in place, but of course we need to also create some UI that can react to this and display the user as blue and the bot as a gray text box. So let's go ahead and stop the emulator and get started with writing the code for our chat bubbles. So continuing inside the for each loop, we're going to go ahead and first create a check if the message dot contains the string of brackets and user, because this will be used to identify the user message. But if it contains this, we can go ahead and say let new message equal message dot replace occurrences of, and of course we're going to replace user with an empty string because we don't really need anything there. So that's going to clean the message for us, but it's also going to allow us to use this for identifying the user message. But if that happens, we can go ahead and create an H stack and it's going to take a spacer because we want to push the message all the way to the right side of the screen. Then we can go ahead and just customize our text box. So here we'll type in new message because that is the user message with a padding, a foreground color of dot white, a background color of dot blue with an opacity of 0 0.8, then a padding of dot horizontal of 16 and a padding of dot bottom of 10. So let's go ahead and test this out. If we click on play, we can go ahead and send a message now such as ASD ASD. And as you can see, it placed it right there. It's not going to send the bot message now because we've not defined that yet. And if we create another, it's going to appear there as well. And you may have noticed that it's appearing at the top and going down. I'll also show you how we can fix that. So it ends up being at the bottom, as I showed you earlier right here. And actually right before the background or right after the background, we should give it a corner radius of 10. Now we need to go ahead and customize the bot message. So here we're going to go ahead and create else. And inside this block, we can actually just go ahead and copy this right here, this entire H stack and paste it inside. We're going to add a few minor tweaks, such as this should just be message, for example, and the spacer has to be below it so that it will be pushed to the left side. Then we can take away the foreground color of white and change this to dot gray with an opacity of 1.5. But otherwise, everything else is going to remain the same right there. And we can actually go ahead and type something else and it's going to appear right there and the chatbot is going to respond. But of course, it's still in the wrong direction. And that's where we're going to use this very interesting rotation effect. So on the second to last one, we're going to go ahead and call rotation effect and flip it 180 degrees. So everything's going to be upside down. And you're going to notice that when we type something, it's going to push up from the bottom. So that's not really what we want yet, but it's a good start. And the next thing we're going to do to actually trick the program is go ahead and create another rotation effect with the degrees of 180 so that it's going to appear at the bottom. I know this may sound crazy, but it works wonderfully. And finally, the final touch is to add a background color because right now the entire screen is white and it looks, it looks all right, but I want to be able to see the background. So here we're going to type in color.gray and give it an opacity of 0.10. So now it actually looks like a background. And with that being done, we can actually go ahead and run the entire program. So as you can see, as soon as we load the app, we're going to have iBots and we also have a scroll view here so we can view all of the messages. And to write something, we just tap on the edit text and we can say hello and click on enter and it will send it to the chat. Alternatively, we can also just type something here and click on this button over here. The difference is if we say hello and click on this button over here, it will not close the keyboard. But if we say something inside here and click enter, it's going to close the keyboard. And finally, we can tell the chatbot goodbye. So goodbye. And it will say talk to you later. 
So the chatbot is working perfectly and we can even scroll through the messages to see what we wrote earlier in case we forgot for some reason. And yeah, that is how we're going to conclude this chatbot. I hope this tutorial helped and with that being said guys, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.